As you join us today, we encourage you to reflect on the land that you're on and its history. We're located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. The territory is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon, One Pen Belt Covenant and is home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. We are grateful to work on this land. Hello, Tiffers. Thank you for joining us for today's press conference. My name is Raddy Ann Simon Play. I'm the culture editor for Now Magazine, the film critic for CTV's Your Morning, and the pop culture columnist for CBC Radio. And I will be moderating this discussion on The Grave Digger's Wife. Uh, the Grave Digger's, Digger's Wife is a beautiful, poetic film about a family facing a devastating loss, but rallying to find hope. Uh, if you have yet to see The Grave Digger's Wife, it is screening tonight at the Tiff Bell Lightbox. It's also screening Thursday at the Ontario Place West Island Open Air Cinema, and we will have a second digital screening of it on Friday. And now I just, I just want to jump in and start discussing this beautiful film with this beautiful and talented team. So allow me to introduce producer Misha Jari, producer Risto Nikolai, actor Omar Abdi, and actor Yasmin Warsame. Unfortunately, uh, director Hader Eruz Ahmed could not be here. He's stuck in transit, so everyone on here is going to be doing double duty to make up for his absence. All good? Everyone good? <laughs> um, and Misha, uh, you're joining us from Helsinki. Yasmin Omar Risto, you're here in Toronto. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you, you know, thank you for this very, very beautiful, beautiful film. Um, and, and I guess like we just want to start by talking off, talking about like the the conception of this character, right? The grave, the the the, the story is the grave digger's wife. It is um the grave digger is struggling to collect uh, to raise money to pay for his wife's kidney tra transplant, which she needs to survive. Um, it it is a story about hardship, but it's also a story about hope. But I mean, talk to me about this about this grave digger. Like uh, I mean, this this character, it's, he has a there's a community. He's part of a community of grave diggers who who are in some ways ambulance chain. They're waiting outside of a hospital for the for the for the ambulance to reel in a body that they really fingers crossed is a corpse that they could bury to make a living. Um, how did we how did we uh, develop this character? Where did the inspiration for this character come from? Can you, can you give me the backstory of that? Well, if I'm allowed to answer this question, I think everybody yes, of us might have a little bit different version of it. But uh, I understood that Kada once upon a time, or not once upon a time, had a relative who passed away in Finland. And uh, he happened to or ended up arranging with his brother the funeral of this person. And the, then the brother kind of like commented and said, like, back home or in, in Somaliland or Somalia, this would have been arranged pretty fast. And then the brother told the story or the, the, that, that, that it's, it's kind of a thing to do fast and, and that there are like people like our character in the film uh, waiting, waiting usually to help the families of the disease to bury, bury the persons fast and, and so on. So I think that was kind of like the, what you call, uh, jumping board of this character for Kadar. And uh, to, to elaborate more on where it comes from, unfortunately Kadar would have to be here, but I think there's a lot of, lot of, lot of his personal history and a lot of people close and, and important for him as, a, as kind of like a, uh, inspiration for this character and I, I suppose quite a lot of the characters in the film are such mm -hmm. well you, I mean, you, uh, you go, uh, yeah yeah, yeah the, the other ones in the other side of the Atlantic can correct me if I'm wrong please <laughs> <laughs> this was a Risto Omar I mean you are all on set have you met these grave diggers did you was there any research involved in terms of uh, how this community operates when you're making this film 
No, basically, in, in uh, those who are in the film, they are just street casted persons. But uh, I kind of, when I was there, I, I felt and saw many things, and I kind of understand the Qatar's uh, point and in, in what kind of life is in, in Djibouti or Somalia. So, yeah, it's uh, it's like me at all. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, but then talk to me about like, you know, like this is a movie, it's it's obviously a movie about this relationship between this father, his wife, his their son, uh, just really kind of bonding together or making, trying to make things work. But it's also, it feels like in their drama, it's exploring Dibuti as a character, right? It's like, it's, it's through their story. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing the hustle on the street. We're seeing the infrastructure of the health system. We're seeing family traditions and customs and cultures and hardship. Uh, is, was that, is that kind of the, was that the plan right from the get go in the scripting stages and stuff to make sure that we, we were, we're creating a portrait of this area and this community through this story? Yeah, I think there was a lot of discussion about it, uh, and especially with the production designer Antti Nikkinen and, and, and uh, DOP Arto Peltoma. They they felt that it's important to show the, the the kind of the poor side of the deputy, not to show the the modern buildings and that kind of stuff. So then keep the the visual uh, style through the film, and I think we managed really well to do it. And and uh, I think it was a right decision. To, to go and, and see what kind of life is there. That's yeah. yeah. And they did uh, they did do two uh, recce trips there, and and during that time it obviously became obvious that it's an exceptional place, and to take everything out of it, kind of heightened the importance of Djibouti itself. So, kind of like if you once go there, let's show it as it is, or as we want to portray it, or they wanted to portray it. So yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, what about, uh, I mean, uh, Omar and Risto, I mean, did you, did, I mean, how familiar were you with the areas that were, that you were shooting in? Um, I mean, was this film sort of an exploration of that, uh, uh, of those places, or was it sort of a reunion since you come from, from these areas? No, absolutely for me, it was totally new. And, and it was, uh, it was an adventure, I must say, <laughs> and to see the country. And I'm really, really happy that I, I was able to experience that. But uh, yeah. for you? Yeah. Well, I think uh, uh, to me it was somehow uh, familiar when I get back to my country because also me, I, I came from there when I was a young, uh, young kid, came to Finland, age of uh, 10, between, 10 between 11. So, but I went back to home country, and I think it's also the same. Like when we talk about Somalia, we talk about Djibouti, they are all the same, you know, like just mm -hmm. the, the, the culture, the way that they build. And of course, it's the same nation. And to me, it was not so quite shock. I can say <laughs> it was not a shock for me either. But I couldn't get the exactly the, the word that I can. Well, but I mean that it was it was familiar. Mm. Yasmin? Yeah, I, I would say similar as well. Like Omar, I've left Somalia when I was quite young. So it was really, um, it was like um, a reminisce and a nostalgic almost uh, emotion being there because it, it, it felt for me, it, I was amongst my people. I was in my country. Um, I could understand everyone. Everyone looked like me. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, like I grew up in always being the odd one out or the you know alien um, to right. say, you know. So it was good to be home and to be to 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 sit with our people and talk in our tongue, like mother tongue, and mm -hmm. walk in our land. It was it was quite um, um, a, a, a homecoming feeling. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if I we even pointed out that you're Canadian, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, so like, I mean, for our <laughs> audiences here at home, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a, I don't know which one we call the homecoming. You going to Djibouti, or you coming here back to Toronto after all of this? But um, but you know, like, tell me how how do you end up in a movie like this? Then come from Canada, like, how did they how did they find how did this Somali Finnish director cast you at a movie in Djibouti all the way from I don't know where are you Toronto or Vancouver. From Toronto. Toronto. So yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. Kada, I wish Kada was here. He's the magic man. Well, I think. <laughs> I think I know that uh, how it happened. I think uh, this was 
Of course, Khadr wrote this uh, story, uh, it started 2011, as Misha said that, you know, it related to his uh, family. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and I remember that uh, when Khadr was talking with me that the process and everything, one day, I think many, many years ago, it was 2012 or 13, he just saw a big picture a billboard. <laughs> yeah, a billboard. The H&M company. Yeah, a billboard. <laughs> of, uh, the H&M well, Yeah, the H&M. H &M uh, company. Yeah, and, and, and he was like, you know, like, he said that on the straight, uh, straight away. He knew it somehow. <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> she's the one that you sleep, that he was sleeping. Play the role, for. yeah. Yeah, and it took, it took so long that to even get you. Mm -hmm. on, 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 yeah, he found space. me. He located me. I, yeah. I'm not really, I don't, I'm not on social media a lot. Yeah. So it just so happens that one day I looked at it and it just, it, he was, he just, it was a very short no note that said, I just, I just need your email. Um, I won't bother you. Just read the script. I promise if you don't like it, I won't bother you again. Yeah. And I was like yeah. intrigued, of course. And I was like, that's a lot of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to me. Here's my email. And of course, yeah. I loved it. And I called him and we talked for three hours as if like it was a minute. It was, yeah. it was, it was something beyond us. I, I don't know how to explain it. This movie needed, it was, it was leading us all, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like, I mean, the headline right there is from an H&M billboard to Djibouti to like, you know, it's, it, it, it is such a journey. Um, uh, but and then, but Omar, I mean, you I, I, do you have previous acting experience as well? Like, because like, I understand that you, you you're a friend as opposed to like you going through a traditional audition process. How do you get into this movie? Oh, well, I get it. That I, I, I used to know Khadr. Uh, he's he's one of my friends, but it it, it didn't it didn't relate it with that. But he was he writes a short movie in two thousand eight, uh, which uh, Yuho Kwasman, the director of that movie, was directing. And then they were looking some locations, uh, Somali cafeteria. So I was supposed to uh, deal for them that cafeteria, and then. It was my first time to see Yuho. Straight away when I went from the cafeteria, Yuho was just telling Khadr, hey, would you call him that guy? <laughs> and we have to change our main character somehow. Or was it that, you know, he, they, they were looking for. And then I said to him, I've never been acting. And he said, well, well, come first and we will make some practice and let's see, because you have some photogenic or what he called that. And then when we uh, practice after 15 minutes he was you don't you don't need to practice but it was by Yuho. so in this case Hadr was uh, very confident that to see i think Hadr get in love with that time because he was on the process also with the movie he was every day in there and then sometimes Hadr said that you know i was on his mind when he was writing on the, mm -hmm. on the yeah for the, for the script but at the end of it, everything was not clear when we get the money and everything. And of course, you know, this is big project, so it cannot be also on my shoulder. So it, it, they were, uh, it been open to casting to all over the world and everywhere. And, you know, uh, later I get the, uh, by the casting, uh, the trust of Misha and Mark and everyone who was on this uh, part of this uh, movie. And I'm a very grateful and thankful that to all of them, uh, especially Khadr, who was after me. And I can include also, we were practicing with Khadr uh, about one year without uh, even that knowing that this will be uh, made. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for, for the whole team. But this is, as Yasmin said, I think it's some kind of choice on one because, you know, I can. Exactly, even say more that you know the all the people with who is in Djibouti, uh, the young boy who don't have even television or TV or who never been in the in front of camera, the other uh, the the other cast, other uh, actors who's in there. Well, I can say that this is chosen one, but of course the credit is going to the director who see every one of us mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and somehow how we truth that you know it's miracle i can i, I can say that you know this is <laughs> other project and he succeeds really and and, and it's great yeah connor is is really good for um uh he has a really good eye for finding the right people for mm -hmm. the production and as well as when we were in Tiputi, 
uh, and uh, he made street casting and then he really picked the right person for the film. So he's really good yeah. at that. Yeah, I mean the performances in this are incredible. I mean, you're you're so uh, you know, like uh, Omar. There, there's such a soulfulness to your eyes in this movie, and and you know, Yasmin. I mean, you there's something radiant and just glowing even in the suffering <laughs> that you are portraying in this movie. But you know, one scene, one scene that actually really, really grows in my mind, especially as after I left the movie and it, it just gets bigger and bigger, is is the sequence where you crash a wedding. Right, uh, where you 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 and you, as a couple you crash this wedding. I mean, it's it, when I first saw it, it's fun. But when you start learning this couple's backstory about how it's like they had to sneak off to get married themselves, and now they're sneaking into a wedding. There's a beautiful symmetry there. Um, talk to me about making that scene, what that scene meant to you, what that scene what you feel means to this whole story. Oh my god. That was so much fun. And I have to say, I relied heavily on my husband on that scene with the goat. He helped that he helped keep that goat secure. <laughs> um, uh, oh, was, like the goat wanted to run and you're like, okay. I to run, and while I'm saying my lines, the goat is just, you know, going. And yeah. he just, he was holding her in place for me. <laughs> Thank you for that. The goat was taking me with, with her. Um, yeah. But um, it, it was fun. It was such a fun, and and there was um, there was a lot of a large casting. So we got to meet so many local people, uh, beautiful yeah. ladies. Yeah. He was he was he was, he was chatting up. There. <laughs> 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 um, well, but it was so it was so much fun, wasn't it? We yeah, yeah. The, um, the the performance was real. The, yeah. Um, the dramas were there. The, the, it was just so so vibrant. Yeah. Right. As I said that, you know, one more time, you know, the, every credit is going to, to Khadr, who is seeing different. I was also yeah. looking like, hey, but in the Somali wedding, sometimes I was confused that, you know, how we shooting in the morning because, you know, every Somali wedding is happening. Midnight. Midnight. Midnight and after. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and we have we had that uh, um, dancing and uh, music group. Yeah. yeah, it was magical. The it whole was moment. so good. Yeah, it? oh my yeah. god. Yeah, so good. and I think. So, but it was a hot day. It yeah. was so hot. We we're sweating. We had to yeah. do scene after scene. So it wasn't it wasn't as easy as we made it look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like no, yeah. Twenty Fahrenheit oh, or something. It, it was, was extremely hot. Oh yeah. my god. It was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, if you're talking about difficult shoots, then like I mean, I mean, I don't know. Like the one, the thing that looked most difficult to me is Omar climbing a mountain in heels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like I mean, your character has to go on a on a almost like it feels like a forty days trek across the desert or something, and, and it's like oh, there's something else to do it, and he gets a pair of heels to help him, which Jesus didn't have to do. Um, I don't think uh, Omar. I mean, was, was that the most challenging scene then, in terms of uh, when you're when you're you know in 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 terms of all the things you're all to do in this movie between weddings and and crossing the desert and stuff. <laughs> Well, I think every moment on the movie, really, to me, it was challenge because uh, it's a big project. As I said, that you know that how I can uh, make success. It. And uh, of course, Yasmin was helping me a, a lot of you know, like uh, when she's with me in the scenes or when she's uh, when she's not even with me when she was at that place. But to be to be on back, you know, Khadr was uh, encouraging me all the time and uh, telling me that you know we do together to those heels, the hotness, everything in there. And then what I was putting on my mind all the time was that, you know, I'm not Omar. Just right now I'm Gulen. And my lovely wife is uh, suffering. Uh, suffering. Yeah. So, you know, that uh, that 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 was uh, the main, which was uh, taking me and, and helping me. But, but, but it was quite difficult and hot i can say like your sound was really hot yeah. it was so extremely was, hot and, uh, extremely hot yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Well, we got a question from the audience, which is, I mean, I, I, it might be the same answer that I just because I just kind of asked a similar version of this is what, what was the most challenging moment for you in this movie? What was the most challenging scene to shoot? Every, every, whoever was, yeah, like if it's the producers, like what you tell you all tell me what was the most challenging. I don't know. For me, the first shooting day was quite challenging because it was <laughs> the a first day. yeah first day. <laughs> There was a monsoon uh, rain. It was up, yeah. absolutely 
huge train, Paul, and, 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 and muddy. muddy and everything. And we, we were kind of, okay, is this, we thought that we came to a very hot and uh, uh, a dry wow. country. And there was a lot of uh, water all over the place. And we were thinking of how to avoid to show the water because it was not uh, meant to, to, to see. But we right. managed, and I think it was the first shooting day, the whole crew and talents, we kind of, uh, we fight for it. And we, we kind of we became one big, good crew. Mm. And, and uh, mm-hmm. that's why I think we managed to, to, to shoot this whole film in 21 shooting days in such a hot and hard condition. So. Mm. You know, what I want, I'm interested in, in is, is sort of the relationship between you, Omar, Yasmin, and Hutter as, as diaspora Somali people and the relationship with the community in the land. Because I, so I'm, I'm also a refugee and I know that there's a huge disconnect from between me and the people in the country I left all in my childhood, you know, like we, there, we, we, there, there, there's like, there's a huge gap in, in our experience and, 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 and in terms of like, even just like the finding, identifying with each other sometimes, right? Like we try to, we try to feel united, like that is my home, but there's obviously a rift. Do you experience that, 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 that gap between like, you know, when you, when you, when you're going in and sh- you're shooting in J- Djibouti and Somalia, like, do you feel like, oh, there's, there's a, there's a hesitancy between us, the diaspora, uh, people and and the the locals who were stayed behind. That's a really good question because I think over the years I've always struggled with that not belonging to neither. You know, I'm not Somali enough, and obviously I'm not Canadian enough. Um, I, I don't know why I'm not Canadian enough. I think I look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're as Canadian as the rest of us. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> Um, but uh, that comes with obviously having two cultures and always having to do the dance between the two, um, not being fully either or. Um, and that's just the space I've made home for in myself within myself. I'm I'm the in between. That's who I am. That's that's my culture. I've got a bit of this and a bit of that, and I mash it together and I make myself a home. <laughs> so that's um, that's the, I, I live in that middle point. Yeah. That's uh, who I'm. Where do you? I can't oh, choose sorry. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Yasmin said well. You know. Uh, <laughs> cosine. <laughs> just cosine. Uh, yeah. well, we are in between, but but I, obviously it's also good. You know, sometimes because we have more experience, which sometimes I can say that the film part they have. Somalian party half or the Canadian party half, you know, like mm-hmm. so it's a richness also to, yeah, you to understand. Yeah, you out of yeah. two instead of one, right? Yeah. Two is, mm. yeah. yeah, and sometimes it can be also uh, advantage. Mm. You know, it, it's a very difficult, but sometimes it can be advantage. By the shooting time, I think for us it was advantage because, you know, we have it all the crew, uh, crew uh, from Western, from, from, from Europe, and we were also coming from uh, diaspora, so we could sometimes understand the local as also that we can understand the crew. Yeah, we're good. We're good translators mm. between yes. the two cultures. Right. Yeah. We're good translators yeah. between the two over the years. So yeah. Uh, well, then I mean, but that, that so then like talk to me about you know portraying, depicting, representing Djibouti and Somalia in 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 a way that is respectful. Because I mean. Like, you know, filmmaking can be very extractive. You brought a European crew to Somalia, right? You brought a, 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 so that could be an invasive presence. You brought, you know, the producers are white guys. Sorry, not to call you up. Like, but you know, like you're bringing this gaze, you know, you're bringing this gaze to Africa. I don't think they noticed. They didn't notice that. (laughs) They were right at home in Djibouti. (laughs) You know, you brought this gaze to, um, to, to to this land, uh, how what do you what do you what are the steps you have to take to make sure you are honoring that you're not bringing this kind of European gaze to it, this sort of charitable gaze when you're depicting these communities? I think it was uh, big, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, also, but I understand. I have been in the many countries uh, filming, and I, I I know that you have to respect the country where you go, and you have to listen to the local peoples and and. That's why I, I think uh, the locals who helped us in the beginning, Farusa and Lula, mm-hmm. they were opening the doors. We met the, the Ministry of the Culture, we met the Ministry of Communication. They opened doors and we kind of asked humbly to be with us and help us to make this movie. And I think that was uh, 
the kind of the attitude uh, in the beginning from our side that we are asking help and they were really really willing to help us and that's why it was easy to shoot kind of there even though the, the conditions were a bit hard but I, the people were amazing they were really helpful and it was it's, it was an extremely nice experience for us definitely I for agree. a Scandinavian yeah. team and, and everything it was they were really helpful and, and friendly nice people I, so, can I just add to that I think they were that way towards you guys because you guys came with respect yeah, yeah i think absolutely. had you had you showed any sort of invasiveness if behavior towards them the mm. doors would have been shut at your doors mm. like mm. they would have been shut in yeah. your face right um but i think they they notice how um you've extended yourself you've just kind of came in and said hey listen we we've got a story to tell and we really appreciate it um if you could work with us to tell the story and we need your help and mm -hmm. so every one of them was just like, let's do this. So it was just, yeah. it was that kind of attitude that yeah. they came towards yeah, us right. because I think it was important in the attitude the entire Finland, yeah. Finnish crew yeah. came to the to Djibouti with. Yeah, yeah right. that made yeah. the difference, I think. Uh, and what, what is extra is also, of course, you know, uh, when they get to know that this is a Somali story, which was mm -hmm. also winning. Uh, the locals. Uh, yeah. I mean, that. Uh, Misha and Bristol can tell what Hadar was winning this uh, Cannes, Cannes the 2016 writing. Uh. He, he was in, in kind of uh, in the resident. Uh, resident, yeah, 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 resident. And, and 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 somehow they know that also the local people, I mean that the people who was working with us, this is a very story. And of course the local people was also uh, very proud of that, you know, okay, uh, because Chibuti, because there was also some movie which made it in Djibouti, but they were uh, so proud of, okay, now we can see to the worldwide that, you know, the story which is telling about us, the story where the director is Somali, the story where the whole director is Somali, and of mm -hmm. course, and the story language. where mm -hmm. Somali language is mm -hmm. also there. Mm -hmm. So uh, they feel kind of uh, uh, proud. proud. Yeah. 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 Mm. No. So now, okay, we have time for one more question, and I will take it from the audience question. And this is, is a very big question, especially when you talk about this film, because this is a very, I mean, it's, uh, 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 you know, it looks like a very small film, a very intimate story, but there's so much going on. I mean, again, European film crew in Djibouti, uh, people who, a lot of people who have never seen a camera before, maybe, right? Like, there's all this stuff going on. And from all of that, what is the most memorable moment from shooting? considering all the stakes so many um, i think that for me uh, the moment when we had the camels and the sunset and, and oh i missed that yeah it was super <laughs> beautiful super beautiful moment and the shots in the film it it, it it shows how beautiful the moment was yeah mm -hmm. i think that that for me it was it was the moment how what about you Omar? well to me uh, when to me as an audience also because mm -hmm. when i watched the movie you know where the uh, Nasra is, is is crying and really she feel a pain. That moment was a uh, uh, very difficult even you know to concentrate when I was there because uh, Yasmin was also really really was on that deep feeling on that moment. Mm -hmm. So and also of course which which is I I love and really I I would like to see more and more and more is also one Khadr. Uh, this, uh, the young boy oh, yeah. is waiting that the doctor coming outside that you know mm. uh, how how his mom uh, is surviving and I want the doctor to tell that you know your mom being safe with that you know and then he become safe. like mm. so happy to mm. to uh, our other other actor so those moments are really beautiful women when I was in the place also that is some yeah. some moments which I love. Yeah. yeah, and you, yes, man. Oh my God, so many, but uh, the food. <laughs> 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 the authentic Somali, effortless food. Um, so that every corner, like anywhere you go, you could just like, it's like being in Italy and eating Italian food. It's right, just, right, right. Yeah, it's good. It was good. So I really enjoyed oh. it. Okay, so then, like, I mean, let me just add on one extra question to this then. If anyone in Toronto wants to grab some Somali food, where are we going? Yes, oh. man. So many. There's a there's okay. a really nice gem in because I live in downtown, so I do okay. the downtown ones. And there's a really nice um, um one right at uh, on Parliament. Um, mm -hmm. 
escapes me, but it, there's a, there's a, you go downstairs and you sit in these pillows, like the Saudi Arabian pillow things. And that's good. I like that. You take your shoes off, you sit down on the floor, you get, you know, you wash your hands and you get in, you know, with the banana and the hot sauce and the whole nine yards. <laughs> so okay. So, good. so <laughs> food Twitter, find that parliament spot, add it into the replies. That's all the time we all have. Thank you. Thank you so much, y'all, for, for being here. Thank you. I'm just going to do my closing notes here. Thank you uh, for those watching this conversation. Thank you to Yasmin, Omar, Risto, Misha for having this conversation with me. And thank you for giving us such a beautiful, beautiful film. If you want to check out The Grave Digger's Wife, it is screening at the Tiff Bell Lightbox tonight. It is screening at the uh, Ontario Place West Island Open Air Cinema on Thursday. And there will be another digital screening on Friday. So enjoy the film. Enjoy the rest of your festival and have a good one. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. <laughs>